So today I'm gonna to tell you GHL users why you should not use the pH probe for your calc foster stirrer. So one thing I've always said about GHL is that the equipment is absolutely incredible, but the software can be a little bit wonky. The pH probe for the calc foster stirrer has this exact same problem. There's a software issue. It actually took me a little bit to figure out how to film this video. I redid it multiple times because the software was so wonky for me to figure it out. Once I figured it out, it was a breeze. But essentially, um, the GHL software is not able to have a pH above 9.5, I think is what it is. So your cough washer, which is gonna sit over 11, 12 pH, is always gonna be setting off an alarm because you cannot tell your GHL that a higher pH is okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I actually changed my pH probe to the conductivity probe for this exact same reason. The conductivity probe does not put off the error. It tells me that my salinity is around 39, which is really all I need to know in the calc stirrer is to know that the conductivity has a reading. Um, so that way I can see when it starts to drop, whether or not I need to add more caulk to the calc stirrer. So the probe allows me to know exactly when I need to add calc washer to the calc stirrer, which just makes life easy. It's definitely not necessary, but just one of those nice little whipped cream on top features that I like. So I absolutely freaking love my Avast Marine calc stirrer. I wrote an article about why it's so amazing on reefs.com. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. One of the things I like about it so much is it already had a probe holder. So that way I could put in either a pH probe or a conductivity probe. So I would know exactly when I needed to fill up my alkalinity in the container add calc washer to it. So did a little bit of research trying to figure out which probe I wanted, whether or not I wanted the pH probe or the conductivity probe. And what I ended up going with was the pH probe. I was told to go with conductivity by some people because the alkalinity, the alkaline solution is so um, rough on the pH probe. But after talking to GHL, they said it's the same intensity on both probes. However, I've decided that the conductivity probe is better and this is why. So I've realized after I switched my ORP probe to the pH probe, I bought the new pH probe and switched it all in the GHL settings, that GHL doesn't allow you to set the alarm limits above 9.5, which is a real problem for Kalkwasser solution because it's typically at a pH between 10.5 to 11.5. What ends up happening is that the GHL is always red because it always thinks there's an alarm on because I can't set the pH limit in the appropriate range. So what I ended up doing was getting the conductivity probe with the um, an extra pH card, computer card that I'm going to install into my Profilux. So that way I can have two pH probes, not two pH probes, did I buy the wrong card? So you have to get a card. This card adds an extra probe for pH and redox or and conductivity. So you can choose pH and redox or redox then conductivity. So it gives you a lot of options by with this card. So this card gives you a lot of options between an extra pH or redox probe. So let's open this thing up. Pull down my glasses. I'm looking for the English. Up oh, there's the English. This card extends your prophylax by these inputs. A lower input for a pH electrode or redox electrode with BNC plug. Upper input for conductivity sensor. Um, can be adapted to the respective sensor type. pH value of four to 10 in case of pH and an input voltage. So again, pH doesn't go above 10, which is a problem if you're trying to measure or keep an eye of your um, Kalkwasser solution. The nice silver metallic packaging. This is a 
um, this will go into the conductivity meter so that I can zero the conductivity. Oops. So just a computer chip, computer card that I'm gonna install. And then the conductivity, the extra conductivity probe. All right, let's pull out this prophylax and get it going. All right, let's see if I can get this thing taken apart. There are these covers in the back. I'm gonna to wanna to take one out. Get your card. Should just be a matter of plugging it in. Looks like it plugs in vertical. So there's prongs here and there are female plugs here for you to plug it into. So I'm just gonna stab it right in there. So this whole thing is that card I was showing y'all earlier. And now I have an extra port for a conductivity probe and a pH or redox probe. So I'm gonna put the covers back in. Well, that could not have been much simpler. I'll put back together with extra ports. Now let's see what happens when I get it all hooked up and turn on the app. So I have on my probes labeled um, salinity, redox, pH, and temp. I try to keep them in order so that way I don't have to try and look at the back of my GHL prophylux while I am trying to get all the wires hooked back in this tiny space. So now I'm gonna go into the GHL settings and see what the actual app shows. So we're gonna to go to that a couple of weeks ago whenever I was trying to figure this out. Um, changing from the pH to the conductivity and adding the new software card and all of that. So just to sum things up, don't use the pH probe, just go ahead and get the conductivity probe. If you want to monitor your Kalkwasser stir concentration on your GHL, don't make the same mistake I did. The pH probe or the, the basicness of the actual calc stir solution, but the software is gonna be the problem for you. So make sure you just go ahead and do a conductivity probe and call it a day. Thank you guys for watching this video. Again, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell down at the bottom and let us know if there's anything else that you'd like to see.